Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. In this video, I want to explain how fluctuations in blood sugar and its effect on the thyroid, how actually it could cause hypothyroid symptoms like a slow metabolism, uh, hair loss, especially the one-third of the eyebrows, fatigue, no matter how much rest you get, uh, weight gain, and even sometimes fluid retention in your wrists, it could be in your legs, it could be in your ankles, due to the fact of a low thyroid because of fluctuations in blood sugar. Now, whether you go on high blood sugar or low blood sugar, it stresses the body. It, it creates tremendous st stress on the body. So, how our blood sugar is regulated, we should be in this safe zone right here. That's where we want to be. However, if we have increased blood sugar, we release a hormone called insulin. Now, I'm just going to signify insulin with an I. And the function of insulin is to bring down the blood sugar is to escort glucose into the cell. Now, if we go bouts with low blood sugar, we're going to release a, a hormone from our adrenal glands called, called cortisol. Now, the function of cortisol is actually to bring up the sugar. Again, so we want to be in the safe zone. We want to be right here in order to be safe, to feel good. The problem is when we have those fluctuations, it causes tremendous stress on the body. Now we have two particular glands. We have the adrenal glands, which they're small glands. They sit on top of the kidneys. And also too, we have the thyroid gland, which is a butterfly-shaped gland right in the middle of the neck. Now the function of the adrenal gland, that's our stress glands. It releases cortisol and also too, adrenaline. It does release our hormones as well, like testosterone, the, estro uh, the estrogens, but I'm going to talk about strictly about cortisol and adrenaline and how that affects the body. So what happens as well is that when you have increased ad uh, adrenal function, it also hits your thyroid gland. Now we produce uh, T4 and T3. We produce 93% inactive T4, and that gets converted into usable T3. However, we're still, we're still producing about 7% active T3 from your thyroid gland. So the inactive T3, 60% 60, 60 gets converted in the liver, 20% gets converted in your gut, and 20% get converted in the target tissue. Okay, I'm just going to label it this way. However, when we have chronic stress on the body, due to fluctuations in blood sugar, it slows the way how everything works. So the end result is, with the adrenal glands, too much stress on that gland will increase the cortisol in the blood, which the cortisol, too much cortisol in the blood, reduces the pituitary gland function. Now we have a system, a feedback loop, called the HPA axis. Now in the hypothalamus, that's called the master gland, that sends a signal down to the pituitary gland and that sends, a, that sends a signal down to the adrenal glands, okay, to release, you know, cortisol, hormones, adrenaline. However, when we are stressed out, we also have a gland on the side here, okay, the thyroid gland. When you have too much of adrenal stress, that actually shuts down the function of the thyroid. So, increase adrenal gland function, the stress gland, too much cortisol decreases the pituitary gland, so the, so the, the effect of decreased pituitary gland actually slows down all other hormone release, especially the thyroid, because the adrenals and the thyroid, they kind of work together. I always say that the adrenal glands is your, batter, is your battery back up to your thyroid gland. Also too, when there's too much stress, we release a protein called cytokines. Now cytokines is a protein released by the immune system when we're stressed out. Now again, in this particular example, I'm gonna talk about the fluctuations of blood sugar because when we have fluctuations of blood sugar in our body, it, it causes tremendous stress, okay? So when the proteins are being released by the immune system, it slows down the thyroid release, releasing hormone, I'm sorry, the thyroid stimulating hormone release from your pituitary gland, which in turn will decrease the release of the thyroid hormone from your thyroid gland. The inactive T4, the active T3 from the thyroid. So all the blood sugar fluctuations, this will decrease your thyroid function. This is where you get thyroid, this is where you get hypothyroid symptoms. So
So when I work with my patients one-on-one, -on -one, what I want to do first and foremost is decrease sugar in your diet. This means the carbohydrates, this means the pastas, the sugars. I always recommend getting your, getting your carbohydrates from, from vegetable sources. Also too, exercise. And that just means exercise if it's just 10 minutes a day, first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, so your body actually dips into the fat stores for energy. When we exercise, it makes those uh, cells less insulin resistant. So when you're less insulin resistant, you're not going to have these fluctuations in blood sugar and you're going to be more in the safe zone and that's where we want to be. Supplements. There's a, there's a lot of supplements out there. I did, another, I did another video on supplements to help with the thyroid, so if you want to watch that, that, that'd be good. Or if you want to do your own research with supplements, because that supplements helps the body um, utilize its normal systems much better, which will actually bring up your thyroid function. And also do sleep. When you, get, when you get adequate amounts of sleep, and I'm talking about good sleep, anywhere from seven to eight hours at night, what you're doing, that rest, because when we're sleeping, we go into the rest, digest, and repair state of our nervous system, and that actually brings up the serotonin levels in our brain and our gut, and that in turn is going to help make your body, um, the thyroid cells, be less resistance resistant and actually more willing, uh, more available to work with the thyroid hormone. Also too, it decreases your adrenal stress. It also goes through the repair process, activates your hormones so everything gets more stabilized with sleep. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.